Hey guys, welcome back to It's Not My Shop. So this is, uh, this is my other garage that I have. And I've moved all the Cub Cadets out. We'll walk out there in a second. Uh, but this is, this is where I'm going to build a shelf for my Cub Cadets. I'm going to build a 24 feet long here and run all the way across. And it'll give me three eight foot spaces underneath for three of the cubs. And I'll be able to put four on top of the shelf. cut a bunch of these. I cut these back at the shop and brought them down here uh, the other day. And of course, I've got Butchie and Brutus here with me. <laughs> this is their, their second, their second home. They're full of beans today. I moved some stuff over here in their area. They normally normally have this area to themselves. So I'll show you a couple things in here. I haven't really shown this this building on my channel. This is my model rocket collection. Uh, when my son was when I was a kid, I had model rockets, and when my son was younger we built and flew a lot of model rockets and uh, so these are some of the flown these model have been rockets. flown recently uh, with some resultant damage but uh, out here I've got quite a bit of quite a bit of space at this house there's some fields fields right up the road that are 100 acres or so, you know, open fields that let me fly. And I have an acre and a half here of grass, just open, no trees, and I can fly some of them in this area. But I'll take you out and show you the Cub Cadets that I've moved out of here. You can see the the backyard here is the backyard is about an acre of open grass. This used to be a farm that was subdivided, I don't know, ten years ago. So I moved these tractors out here earlier today. There's seven of them, and let's give you a real quick rundown. This is a 149, which is a hydrostatic, 14 horsepower. Got a rototiller on the back of this one. Uh, this is a 123, which was the first hydrostatic tractor that Cub Cadet came out with. I think it was 66 or 67. So that's a cool little tractor. This is a Model 1000. It's a quiet line, gear drive, 10 horsepower. It's been frame up restoration about five years ago on that, maybe six. So it runs great. This is my custom paint job. It's a, it was a 108. I put a 14 horsepower engine in it, so I captioned it a 148. Cup Cadet never made a 148. They made a 108 and a 128. The 14 horsepowers went into the 
hydrostats like that 149 right there. Um, so this is a custom paint job. This is a 1650. This is a quiet line, hydrostatic, 16 horsepower. And it was uh, the most powerful um, Cup Cadet of the era, quiet line, mid 70s. It's got a snow blower on it. This is a 1450. This is like my main mower for here until I got my new Kubota a couple years ago. That's got a 50 inch, 50 inch deck on it. This is a 72. These were the less expensive models, and uh, this so this was a seven horsepower engine. It would, um, you know, pull a 38 inch mower deck without any problem. This one's got a three point hitch on it, a sleeve hitch on it for implements. I have a little cultivator I hook up to that. So, right, so that gives you a rundown on the seven tractors that I keep at this location. I'm going to go back inside. So my project is to build, I mean I was going to get pallet racking and it's just the logistics of getting pallet racking that was too tall, the stuff I wanted, I, I didn't, didn't want it real tall. My forklift only reaches six feet so having a, a shelf you know above six feet on a pallet rack is you know, not that useful. So my plan is just to build a shelf about eh, even with those electrical outlets. Now these electrical outlets unfortunately are in the... I wish they were six inches higher. My deck is going to come to about the top of these. There'll be a space. I'll still be able to get to the plugs. I mean I've got couple of 220 plugs here but it's mostly just 110 so when I had this when I had this house built you know my plan ahead of time was cover this place with electrical outlets uh, so if I'm ever have to move my shop here then you know I have plenty of electrical outlets the electricians were they didn't understand got some 220 outlets here over here um, my welder air compressor um, you know all my two, I have a lot of 220 volt tools so that's the reason for the 220 volt outlets okay I had uh, I still have some stuff in here I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna get rid of this trailer and uh, of course this trailer is just in here temporarily because got the lumber in here and it's air conditioned in here I got a mini split so that's why the trailer's in here. So I got all the lumber. All right, so I'm gonna get started. Uh
All of this lumber was left over from a fencing job. Uh, the contractor had purchased um, extra material and so he left it. And so it's been two years since, uh, since that fencing job. So this lumber is set out in the woods on a couple of sleepers. It's all pressure treated. And I'm, I don't need pressure treated, but it's free lumber. So that's why I'm using it. If you have a miter saw and you don't have a laser on it, um, you need to get rid of it and get one with a laser. This is a 10 inch Hitachi sliding compound miter saw. The one I have back at my workshop, um, primary workshop, is a 12 inch Hitachi sliding compound miter saw. Uh, Good saws. I've been happy with it. The laser is a game changer. So 
I'm working on the diagonal braces now. I've got one across this bay on the back, one on this end. I'm gonna cut another one for here, this bent, another one across the back in this bay, and this bay, another diagonal. Got one cut for here already. And I'll have one at the at the other end. Uh, I have access to this this one door here. The second door in the back doesn't really open, but I can get into that cabinet through there. I'm good with that. All right, got another load of supplies. Just made a trip to Home Depot. So work on some of the more some more of the diagonals. How's my brooper doing, huh? And there's Butchie over there on the floor. Nice and cool in here. Pretty warm outside. I've gotten uh, my camera ran out of battery, so I didn't uh, record putting the the front. Uh, ledgers on. I uh, just want to make a comment here. These are, this, like I said, this was, this is basically free lumber to me, the, all this pressure treated lumber, because it was left over from a fencing job. And it's true, true one by sixes and true four by fours. So I've doubled up, doubled up the one by sixes since that's what I had. And of course, uh, they will be stronger if they're pinned together. So I will shortly here come back and put a series of uh, inch and five eighths screws to tie the two individual two one by sixes together to basically make a two by six. And it'll be a full it's a full two inches. Uh, so that should be that'll be plenty strong. I did cut all the diagonals. I've got. I've got one more someplace. Oh, there it is. All right, I've all cut the diagonals. I've got diagonals for each of the uh, bents or intermediate frames, and then also for the for the backs. And I'm gonna get, I'm getting ready here to go ahead and screw them in to the uprights. Uh, so there. I had to buy the, those two by fours. So that's really the only lumber I had to buy and the plywood. I bought three sheets of three quarter inch plywood, almost $50 a sheet and some, some two by fours. So, you know, I've got less than $200 at this point, um, probably wind up being invested plus some screws for the whole shelving unit. So, uh, pretty reasonable. Okay. I'm going to, um, drive some screws in the diagonals.
The addition of these tie plates is probably overkill, but in just in case there's a, a situation where I accidentally bump into the rack with a forklift or something, that'll keep everything together. And since, since these are like eight foot boards joined here, don't want them to come apart. Uh, if somehow this gets run into um, and pushes over, don't want the screws to, to pull out or anything. So that's just a, kind of a belt and suspenders approach. So I've got the whole rack assembled here. And so I have room, as I mentioned before, three Cub Cadets on the floor, and I think I'll have room for four on top. And the reason I only have three is because these two bays are eight feet, and I have two tractors with attachments that are eight feet, almost eight feet long. The snow blower and the rototiller will go here and here, and then a standard tractor will go here, which is a little over six feet. And I'll have room for at least three on top. If I extend this end over the workbench, which I think I'll do, that'll give me enough room to put a fourth one on top. But the whole idea here is to clear up floor space. So <laughs> it is, it is what it is.
All right, so that's basically it. All that's left is to screw off the top sheet of plywood into the frame. So I'll leave you at this point and we'll come back when I have the rest of this mess in here cleaned up and I'm ready to put some Cub Cadets up on here. See how that goes. So I'm laying out a couple more pallets here. I'm going to put the tractors on the tractors I'm going to lift up on pallets. So I made one. I went and got my forklift. Yeah, went home yesterday, got the forklift, brought it back this morning. So, so here's the pallet I made. It's uh, six feet long, and the track on the tractor is a little over is about five feet. So I have um, curbs on the front and back. Also lock the brakes. Again, this is this is my scrap salt treated lumber, and uh, I've already done a test lift, no problem. So I'm going to make, gonna make more. several more pallets like this. I need to go buy some lumber. Uh, I went home and got the forklift and I went back in the woods and discovered that I only had like five more um, pieces. One, yeah, five more pieces of this fence board. They were 16 feet. So um, cut them to eight feet, brought them here, and then cut them to six feet to use them for this pallet. So I've run out of the scrap two by sixes, one by sixes, salt treated stuff. So I've added a couple of my own two by fours. I actually have one, one fence board left. <laughs> so I need to go get some more, some more lumber. So I'll do that. I'll bring you back when I get back. We'll finish up the other pallets. And with any luck, we'll start stacking these um, tractors up on the, on the shelf. All right, I'm beginning to put together the next couple pallets. I expect to make this will be the this will be two more. I have one already made. I showed you, so that's three for the three tractors. I'm gonna. I think I'm just put two, three up on top, and I might make another pallet for some equipment. See how much room I have. So I actually had to go buy these one by sixes. I ran out of the 
recycled lumber that I had. So they, uh, this is, this is uh, pressure treated five quarter. I wanted, I wanted, I got it because it's five quarter. A one by sixes would have been too lightweight, I think. So I decided to get the salt treated because I could get five quarter stock from Home Depot.
All right, so this is what I wound up with. I decided to just pull the tractors in, uh, getting them in sideways. I got this one, the 1000 in sideways, but I had to put a dolly under the rear wheels in order to get it in there. And I need to put dollies under the front wheels as well. But I have a set of dollies I can use for that. These other ones, they're taking up just as much floor space as they would otherwise this one would have to be out in the floor if this one was in if these two were lengthwise in so i think this is this has certainly freed up a whole lot of space on the floor that you know otherwise would have was full of tractors so it did help quite a bit uh, i wound up putting uh, my air compressor up here and the dozer blade the power angle blade for the 1450 is up there on this small pallet. So I got that up off the floor. And I've got still got the welding tanks. I need to figure out where to put them. And the only thing else that's not up on the shelf is this mower deck. This is a 48 inch mower deck. It's got the, the belt tensioners busted. So I need to get a new tensioner for it. I think I'm going to turn it on edge and slide it right in here beside this this tractor right here so I do that and I'll be done still have room to pull my Kubota my Kubota is out here so this is different from the other Kubota you've seen on my channel this is one I just got a couple of years ago uh, this has a quick detach loader, but the main thing is it's got a 60 inch mower deck and that's what I use 99% of the time to cut the grass here. So I take the loader off. It's actually got a quick attach arrangement, which is new for Kubota. Uh, you get different implements on there. So it's a 26, 2680, right? BX2680. It's a nice little tractor. I think I've got 40 or 50 hours on it. I just use it to cut grass and move stuff around here. So that goes back in the far right bay here. And then the rest of the space, pretty wide open. We do pull. Oh, here are my, my two buddies. They don't know quite what to make of this now with everything stacked up here. So this whole building, <laughs> let me walk over here to the end. This whole place was full of tractors when I started. I still haven't pulled my Kubota in. I'm gonna cut the grass tomorrow morning before we head home. Uh, but this rack definitely cleared up a lot of floor space. Um, have room for it to pull one of our cars in here. And lots of room over here for projects. I did um, put the, this mower deck up against the wall here slid this tool card in here between the tractors, slid the oxyacetylene bottles here behind this tractor. So I built the shelves basically on Sunday and the pallets uh, today and stacked all the tractors up. So a um, couple days work over the course of Three or four days. I did do some cleanup, reorganize some stuff. That's it. Big difference, big improvement. And uh, actually got to use the forklift for the purpose that I'd originally it was the genesis of the of the project. The, the where the idea came from. I said, boy, it'd be nice to be able to stack my tractors. <laughs> so that was 
the objective for building the forklift, one of the objectives for building the forklift, I found other uses for it already, but uh, being able to do this, pick up these tractors were, was the design, was the, the, the design requirements. Being able to pick up a thousand pounds to six feet. Now the tractors weigh 750, you know, the pallets another, yeah, maybe a hundred pounds. Some of the tractors have fluid in the rear tire, so that makes them 850, another 100 pounds. So the, um, this red tractor does have fluid in the rear tires. So 750, 850, plus a pallet, another 100 pounds, 950. So, I mean, you're pushing 1,000 pounds to pick that up. And uh, I could tell this was heavier than the other one. This is going to be 750 pounds. That one's maybe even a little bit less, 650. It's a um, narrow frame, older design. Yeah, it's probably very similar to this one, so 750. And of course, these other ones on the floor here, the 1000 has fluid in the tires, the 149 has fluid, the snowblower tractor has fluid, this mower, uh, I don't know whether it has fluid in the tires or not. So, uh, anyway, uh, I hope you got uh, a little bit of excitement <laughs> watching me lift those tractors with that <laughs> sketchy forklift. And actually, it, it worked pretty well. So, um, I'm done here. Head back to the other house tomorrow. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.